Hello, welcome to Severin Church. Let's open with prayer. God, what a beautiful day it is today to be in your house. Thank you for bringing the Severn family together. Let's pray, God, that we will feel you through the word today and partaking in the sacrament. You have given us your very best, your body and your blood for us so that we may have salvation. I just pray, God, for us now, this time of worship. Bless this time. Those who are absent from them, let us know that we've missed them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, several things we need to tell you. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. Can you believe that? We're getting ready to start. We're getting ready to start Holy Week. And on Thursday, not this Thursday, but the 18th now, we're going to have a Maundy Thursday service. Pastor and Bill and I have done this. This will be our third year. It's going to be a great, great service. We're going to teach you a lot about the Seder meal, and we're going to have a communion, and it's going to be a great time of worship. So come and support us that Sunday. I mean that Thursday, all right? And today is the last day to order Easter eggs. Where are you, Anita? There she is, right there. Get your order and fill them out right here, okay? She's got them in the back. She's got them in the front. You can give them to her. You can put them in the collection plate, but they need them. They need to know how many to make. So please make sure you fill that out and give that, give that to them. I'd just like to tell you that one of my favorite ones is coconut. If you're getting an extra coconut, okay, I like those. Those are great. Okay. Now, there'll be a children's Easter party during Children's Church on the 21st, and there's the sunrise information right there. You can read about it. Uh, Joe wanted me to announce this to you. Gloucester's Men's Ministry Breakfast this coming Saturday will be at 8 o'clock at Newington Baptist Church. Okay? The men won't be having their regular breakfast. They'll be all going to Newington at 8 o'clock. There's no fee, but donations welcome since we'll have no severance men meeting this Saturday, but we're all going to meet at Newington. Okay? I think we covered everything, all right? How about any birthdays? Do you have any birthdays? Right there, you finally, a year? Camden, all right. Have you had a good party yet? All right. That's great. Anybody else? Claire? Claire? Oh, happy birthday. You're in Camden. That's great. Well, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Miss Barbara has the children's message for us this morning. Come over here by me, Matt, Matt, so you can hold the mic for me. Can you hold the mic for me? This morning. Come on down here with us, buddy. I won't embarrass you again, I promise. <laughs> come on, come on. All right, so this morning, the church is going to be taking communion. You see this table up here? And that table represents Jesus' body and his blood when he was crucified for our sins. What's sin? Does anybody know what sin is? I do. What is it? <laughs> it's it's um, my, when you disobey. When we disobey. Oh, that's right. When we disobey. <laughs> um, what we are studying today is Adam and Eve. And when Jesus made us, when God made us, he made us to be pure like that water. But when Eve, get my correct bottles, when Eve sinned, Something happened, and it happened for all of us, everybody. It made us dirty, didn't it? That's kind of sad because that was a nice water to drink, but now you can't use it for anything. Sin just messes everything up. And what it did was put a huge chasm or valley between us and God so that we couldn't have a relationship with him anymore. 
until Jesus came and put a bridge. He died on the cross and made a bridge for us to get back into relationship with God. So this represents Jesus. Hold on. And when he came and died for our sins, he does amazing things with, him, with the blood of Jesus. It changes us. And let's see what happens when we pour this in. Wow. When Jesus comes into our life, he cleans it all back up. He makes it ready to use again for him. And only Jesus can do that. Us being good and trying to be obedient just isn't going to work until Jesus is poured into our lives. And then we become clean. We're going to go learn more about that this morning. Let's close our eyes and pray together, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross that helps us get to you so that we can have a relationship a friendship with you. And Lord, I pray that as we study this morning, that you will open our hearts, adults and children alike, and let us understand that when we take the bread and drink the cup, that we are remembering you and your death and what you did to make it a way back to you. Amen. I came to Jesus, I took my stand, but what I surrender is back in my hand. Defeated by failure and haunted by fear, I cried out in anguish, my God, are you? said, child, you're forgiven, forgiven and free. He said it, I heard it, sweet victory. The future can never intimidate me. Since I've been forgiven, I'm resting and growing in his strong embrace. I've traded performance for amazing grace. My soul is at rest and I still must rejoice when I think of the day that I heard. said, child, you're forgiven, forgiven and free. He said it, I heard it, a sweet victory. The future can never intimidate me since I've been forgiven. He 
said, child, you're forgiven, forgiven and free. He said it, I heard it, the sweet victory. The future can never tell my day be. I've been forgiven, forgiven. Pray with me. We know, God, that when your son came, he had a mission. And on this day, we remember especially as he took that bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. And then their whole lives changed, and our whole lives have changed since that also. I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you just heal us from our sin. Lord, some of us have had a hard week, and we just pray, God, for your healing and understanding. And never let us ever forget that we are your sheep, and you are our shepherd. We're grateful for worship today as we prepare now to continue to worship you. We lift up names of those that are on our hearts that need special prayers at this time, their first names. Amy. Gina. Sam, Christy, this community of faith has lifted up these names, Lord, and there's others we know that are on our heart that may be too painful, but we know, God, that you love all of us. We ask that you bless the men and women that are serving all around the world for our protection today. We pray for our country, our president, our leaders, that they may gain wisdom and realize that they are servants from you, God. Now, Holy Father, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to say by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation,
Pastor Bill has chosen today the passage from Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26 through 30. Matthew 26, 26 through 30. Now while they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor Art was excited that I'm preaching from the New Testament today. He gave me a smiley face on my text message after I gave him the scriptures. Um, a man was in his backyard and he was raking his leaves and his neighbor comes up to the fence and says, Hey neighbor, he said, my wife and I went to one of those memory seminars yesterday. You know where they teach you how to remember things. And the neighbor says, well good, what was the speaker's name? He says, speaker's name. Um, <laughs> he said, what's the, what's the name of that flower that smells real good and it's got thorns on it? He said, a rose? Yeah. Hey, Rose, what was the name of that speaker yesterday? <clears throat> it actually has something to do with our service today because our memory. And that's what the Lord's Supper does. It reminds us. The Lord knows that our memory is not what it used to be at times. I know you haven't ever walked into a room and you stand there thinking, why am I in this room? Am I right? My memory stops when I go in a grocery store. I'll say, you know, bread, eggs, and butter. Bread, eggs, and butter. And I don't know what it is, but when you go in there and you see them shopping carts, it, it just, it don't, does that happen to y'all too? Okay, good. So this morning, the Lord wants us to remember what He did for us on that old rugged cross. The Lord used parables so that people would understand the, the, the message of the kingdom and they would remember it. When He talked about fishermen, they would remember it. When He talked about a farmer who sowed seeds, the people would remember it. And there's no scripture passage any more powerful in the scriptures than what Pastor Art read this morning where the Lord said, do this in remembrance of me. And this morning we are going to prepare ourselves for the Lord's Supper. Before you do that, I want you to imagine a beautiful scene, if you will. The King of Heaven has prepared a table for us. And as we're there, we look around and we don't see any kings and queens and princes, but we see ordinary people. The Lord has prepared this table for us to sit down and dine with Him so that we can remember what He did for us. But just before sitting down to the table, we prepare ourselves. If you remember when you were a kid, before you sat down at the dinner table, you had to go in and wash your hands. And moms, I don't care how many times you wash your hands, you always got the question, you question your kid, did you wash your hands? And they would say, yes. Now what do mothers do next? Come let me see. And if there is a speck of dirt anywhere, the words, and I think they must teach this to all moms in Mom's School 101, you march yourself right back into that bathroom and you wash those nasty hands. Have y'all ever said that like word for word? I, knew, I don't know, Fred, what it is, but they all, it just comes like that. So this morning before we take the Lord's Supper, 
The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. There is a seriousness to taking the Lord's Supper. It is not done because it is a ritual that we have here in our church. It is, it is done because it is scriptural and the Lord says you will do it as often as you will in remembrance of what I did for you. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, we are to have clean hands. It says in Psalm 24, Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. When I talk about clean hands, I'm talking about the sins that we have in our lives. Before you partake of the Lord's Supper today, you are to ask forgiveness of those sins. And I'm going to give you a minute right now, if you would bow your heads and ask God to forgive you of your sins as we prepare for the table today. Thank you. The Lord can and will forgive any sins that you have. We're starting to get prepared for the table this morning, are we not? The next thing you have to do before you come to the table is to have a good appetite. There's a reason that you don't eat jelly beans, a bag of jelly beans, or chips, or Twinkies a half hour before your meal. Imagine, if you will, the, the table that the king has prepared for you the Heavenly Father. And you come to that table and you filled up with junk and you're not hungry. That's not any way to sit down at the table of the king, is it? We fill ourselves with the junk of sin. The Apostle Paul says you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. The bread won't fill us up physically. But the bread and the cup will fill us spiritually. Do you understand that? Because it's a remembrance of what the Lord did for us. When we fill ourselves with all the junk there is in this world, sometimes we don't leave room for the king's meal. I'm going to ask you right now, take a moment and pray that God will fill your heart with His love this morning. Amen. The next thing we bring to the table is patience and harmony. Boy, we live in a fast-paced world, don't we? But the Lord says, take time and remember. So this morning, we're not going to rush through this. We're going to take the time necessary as we dine with the King and remember what He did for us. And in harmony with others. In just a moment, I'm going to ask you again to pray to the Lord, asking forgiveness for those who have harmed you and maybe have never asked forgiveness. Do you understand? The Lord said we are required to forgive them. And then I believe there's a second part to this, Pastor Art. We ask forgiveness for those that we have hurt.
before we come to the table of the king. Would you do that right now, please? Ask forgiveness for those who have hurt you. Ask forgiveness for those that you have hurt. Amen. The last thing that we need to do is after we partake is to leave the table with a purpose. For we have been filled spiritually. And what do we do when we are filled spiritually? Some Christians want to go home and take a nap. Some people will do nothing with the spiritual gifts that God has given them. I'm calling you to service today. That when you dine with the king and you get your belly full of the spiritual food that we have here, that you do something with it. That this week you minister to someone else. You pray to some, for someone else who's hurting. You be there and help them. This is the best food that you can ever have. So I'm going to ask you right now, that you would pray that God would use you for His glory this week. Amen. Let's look at Matthew 26 just for a moment before we take the Lord's Supper. Matthew 26 Verses 26 through 30. Jesus was now beginning to tell them what the purpose of the meal was. They knew it was the Passover. They knew that it represented the Passover meal where they were freed, where the Hebrew people were freed from slavery. And where they had to make bread and they didn't have time to put yeast in it. The Lord said, you're not going to have time. Make your bread, Hebrew people. And when I say go, you go. So the disciples knew that. They knew that they were there celebrating the Passover as all good Jews did. But this night Jesus was telling them something different. And he looks at them and he said... While they were eating, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. They had never heard that before. They didn't know that he was getting ready to be crucified. But Jesus said, When you see this bread, it is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and said, Drink from it, this is the, my blood of the covenant. Some scriptures have the new covenant. Let me tell you what the covenant was. The covenant before was the law. They were saved through keeping of the law. But Jesus said, I have a new covenant. You are going to be saved through me because I'm going to the cross and I'm going to die and my blood will be the atonement for your sins. This is the new covenant. And when you drink the cup, I want you to always remember that. And then he says, I tell you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. There is a promise there, is it not? Jesus said, I'm not going to have this with you. I'm not going to have the banquet table with you anymore till I see you in glory. Some of you in here have lost loved ones this week. Some of you have learned that some of your loved ones are sick. I've had three funerals in six days. Let me tell you, when you can tell the families and tell the, the people there that this person was a believer, there is a banquet table waiting for them in glory. And Jesus said, I told you that I was going to make something for you. And here it is. That's the other promise that we have. We look at this and say, this represents his blood, this represents his body. But the big picture is, you also represents, I'm coming again. And if you pass away before I come again, we're going to have a good meal together 
in heaven. And it says in the very last verse that when they had sung a hymn, they went out. For your own reading this week, it's Psalm 115 through 118. That is the hymn. I'm not going to read all that this morning, but it's beautiful. That is what they sang together as disciples after they had the meal together. But I picked out some verses from Psalms 118. The, the, the passages are 115 through 118 is the whole song. And listen what it says. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. You are my God and I will praise you. You are my God and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever. This morning as we, as we prepare the table, I wanted you to think of the elements a little different this morning because we are dining with the king. He has brought his best to the table today. And we are to thank him and remind him and remember of what he did for us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank you so much for what you've done for us and the sacrifice that you had on that old rugged cross. Bless us, Lord, now as we take the Lord's Supper. Father, may we always remember your goodness and your love and the hope of one day sitting at the banquet table with you. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Will the elders please come and prepare the table? Severin Church now offers the availability of giving online. Go to our website, severinchurch.faith, and click on the Give Online tab. From there, you'll be taken to a secure site to create a unique login and password. Thank you for your generosity.